Okay, here we're going to look at Java exceptions. And we actually, when we're inside of a method, have three outputs that we can possibly have. We can print something, that's that system.out.println. We can return things. It's really common to get those two confused. But we can print multiple things and we can only return a single thing. Okay, and this last one is going to be called throw. And that's where we're going to throw an exception. And returning and throwing are mutually exclusive. So we either return something or we throw something. And actually, when we've seen null pointer exceptions. And actually, we got that because someone wrote code that said throw new null pointer exception. And for both return and throw, you stop executing that method immediately after you execute that line. So any line below a return statement or any line below a throw statement will be unreachable. Okay, I've got an example uh, calling throw for you. So this is in the list class. If you ask for an index that is less than zero to get that index, what we want to do is throw an error. So instead of just like returning null or something that someone might not notice, we want to be super explicit and be like, yo, that was an illegal argument ex exception happening. And we can provide in here uh, a string text for that message. And using our Java skills, we can be like, yo, illegal argument exception must be a class because we're calling it using the keyword new. And we only use new for constructors. A constructor is a method with the same name as the name of the class. We call it using the keyword new, and it makes new objects for us. So here we're making an illegal argument exception by calling the constructor, passing a string as an argument, uh, and then we throw that thing. OK, as a little bit of practice, try finishing the method for get. We've got the error checking up top. Uh, and as practice working with list and list nodes, try and flush out the rest of that method. And you should pause here and I'll keep going. So on this page, I have two calls and they're method calls to get one where the input is too small and one where the input is too big. And you can see what in Eclipse we would see as this error that was thrown. We can see, oh, I get the illegal argument exception and that that text that I put in the get throw statement, when I created that illegal argument exception, that string that I put in gets printed there. And again, Java is super handy that it gives us these links that we can click on. And you can see that argument to get must be at least zero and argument to get is too large. That's exactly what we had. If we go back to that previous slide, uh, looking at what those text error messages were that we provided when we called the illegal argument exception constructor. Okay, if you haven't paused to finish writing get, please do that and I'll keep going. So my strategy was to create a variable current index and I started it as zero. And as I walked through the list nodes in my list, I just incremented that each time. And then I use the same structure that we've used across a lot of different code that iterates through the elements of a list. We started at this dot my head and we kept walking it down saying current node gets current node dot my next. And instead of stopping when I got to null, I stopped once my current index was equal to index. That's when that statement will be false and will come and return the data at current node. Okay, next up, I want to pause it, have you pause it and try and write the contains method. So contains is going to call the compare to method on s, that input, and each of the elements in my list. And in, if any of the my data in any of the list nodes, when called with s and compare to, if that returns zero, that means those two things are equals and my list does contain the element s. Okay, so I pause it here and try and write that code. Okay, here I've got my code. It looks really similar to like the length code and the two string code. I create a new reference called node that references the head. That might start as null and that's fine. If it starts as null, then I'll never execute the body of the while loop and I'll just return false. That makes sense. In an empty list, it doesn't contain any data. Okay, but while the node is not null, I'm gonna call the equals method so here we could have called the equals method like this, or we could call the, the compare to and see if it returns zero. And if s is equal to node.myData, then we'll return true. You might pause and make sure that you have a good understanding of this contains method. And now we're going to go on and try and debug a modified version of it and see what that would look like. Okay, so on the top of the screen, 
I've got that original contains method that we just looked at. And on the bottom of the screen, I've got a modified version where that line node gets node.minex that walks the reference down the list. I move that one above the s.equals statement. And I want you to try and figure out what would happen if I did that. Would it sometimes work? Would it never work? Okay, and pause it here and I'll keep going. So by moving that node gets node.myNext up there, that means we're never going to look at the my data for the first list node in our list. So we might accidentally return false. That's my first hypothesis. But it's actually a little tricky because we only will return false if we go all the way through, we get to the end where node is equal to null, and then we'll return false. But check it out. Say we're at the Say we're at the last node. So if we're at the last node, that means node.myNext is null. We want to be looking at the my data for that node, but instead we're going to set node to null, and then we get a null pointer exception here. Let's look at an example there. So here I make a new list that contains strings. I add B and then A. Okay, and then it's this list AB. That's great. I check if it's empty, and that should be false. I check that the length is two. Okay, that should uh, be correct. And that first line, when I try and call contains, I get a null pointer exception. So you can see it at the bottom. In my JUnit test case, I get that red X, which means not just that my assert equals or my assert true was wrong, but they actually have an error. So someone threw an exception. And you can see that my method add to front called contains, and then I got an error on line 97 in contains, and that's inside the list.java class. So let's look at that line of code. So we know from the failure trace that I've got on the left that I got a null pointer exception on line 97. Null pointer exceptions are a gift. They tell us exactly what line they're on. So I know something on line 97 is null and it doesn't like it. And I have two choices. S must be null because I have S dot something and they would freak out if S was null. Or node might be null because I say node dot my data and Java would freak out if node was null. Okay, so the null pointer exceptions point us right to the line of code where we can ask ourselves the question, what could be null? And then gosh, how could it be null? We didn't expect it to be null. So whenever you get an exception, I really want you to go and click on the link to see what line produced that exception. You can see in my trace that there's something that's actually not very helpful to me. You know, this is trying to access an element. That actually is a hint that we're trying to access uh, the dot my data. That's actually what produced it, but seeing going up another step to line 97, that sees us, sorry, that shows us where we tried to access an instance variable of null.